I would like to open this podcast by shouting out thick thighs. Saves lives. So shout out. So it shall be said. As it has been written. As it has been written, I like big booties. And I cannot lie. All you other brothers can't deny. When that round thing is... (laughs) Hey, this is the Gamers 2 Podcast, your weekly roundup of news and commentary of the video game industry, and anything else that might pique our interest. Peak! Thick thighs, big booties, I don't know. A lot of things. We, we, that, that is a different podcast, and that would be a long time. Yep. And nobody wants to hear us talk about that. That's true. Accurate information. Nobody wants to hear us talk mainly anyway, so. That's also true. Shall we get right into the new releases? Are there actually new releases? Shall we get right into the news? <laughs> wow. Everybody's still kind of dealing with the whole Summer Game Fest releasing, you know, all that stuff. Yes. It's everything we already talked about, basically, that's been released. Yep. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. So we go straight to the news. We go to number one. John Height has left Blizzard Entertainment after being with the company for over a decade. Height, who joined Blizzard in 2011 and has misspelled this in in this entire paragraph, announced the news on social media, or at least I believe. Did, did I, 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 correct? I could have sworn he was misspelled in this, but I might be wrong. Maybe I'm an idiot. I'll look it up. Height, who joined Blizzard in 2011, announced the news on social media, quote, After 12 incredible years at Blizzard, I've decided to step away and start a new quest. It was a tough decision, but I feel like now is a good time as any. Warcraft is in an amazing position as the universe turns 30. Need you all to understand, Warcraft has turned 30. Not World of Warcraft, just Warcraft. That's still pretty ridiculous. I've been so honored to serve all of the heroes of Azeroth. As for what's next in my journey, I don't have any specifics to share quite yet, but I am excited to explore new opportunities and challenges in the industry and continue making great games with talented people, end quote. Height joined Blizzard as senior producer on World of Warcraft Mists of Pandaria. He became executive producer and vice president of the franchise during his tenure before becoming general manager in November of 2021. He also directed production on Diablo 3 and its Reaper of Souls expansion. He started his career in 1993 as creative director of internal development startup The 3DO Company. He joined Electronic Arts in 1996 as executive producer and director of design before moving to Atari in 2002. What a weird shift. In another executive producer role, in 2005, Height joined Sony as director of product development working on God of War 3 and the launch of PlayStation Network. He's seen some shit. Yeah. Seen some shit. That and, is a uh, timeline. Yeah. Uh, interesting that he didn't say he's retiring and that he's moving on to other things. Yeah. I don't I don't really know what it's going to, you know, there's been enough um, leavings mm-hmm. over the years that the always the question is well what happens what happens what happens what happens and you know it's something like this leaving now right before an expansion launch it, most of everything is already like decided especially because they said they made a saga and they're doing you know doing whatever mm-hmm. so it's like yeah i don't really know what um when we would actually see ramifications of this yeah a little bit of a changing of the guard over the past like couple of years yeah all right <clears throat> number 2 Supercell believes there's room for more mobile games to be highlighted during events like Summer Games Fest. Well, yeah, they highlighted one of their own. What are they? <laughs> the Finnish developer was the only company to have a mobile-only game featured during the year's showcase on Friday. However, the studio's marketing... That's last Friday, by the way. Uh, however, the studio's marketing boss, Rob Lowe, said that the organizers of Summer Game Fest were reluctant to include the game at first. Quote, it wasn't easy. Jeff was like, we don't really do that. They'd done a bit on Genshin Impact, but that's on console as well. They hadn't really done much with mobile-only games. They were reticent about it. End quote. Lowe adds that Supercell's request was aided by a video by actor and comedian Ken... How do you say his last name? Huang? Zhang? Zhang? I believe, yeah, Zhang. Dressed as the chicken from the studio's mobile game Heyday, talking to the camera about Summer Games Fest. Quote, I think that played into Jeff's ego quite nicely. So he was like, all right, we'll put you in. We still paid for the privilege, obviously. I mean, shout out Jeff's ego. He's not wrong about that, but also hysterical that he's 
that that one's the only person they mentioned, not the rest of the people in that commercial. Mm -hmm. Well, I think he's mentioned. So they made a video. Well, I don't know. Was it? Did they show it? Like of of that dude talking specifically about summer summer games fest. Oh, I mean they they did the intro where he is chicken and he was talking about the whole thing as chicken and then it was yeah and then it went into the and then it went into the yeah the normal the wild one with everybody and chicken yeah weird shit I mean um I don't agree with that sentiment that there's room for more that there's room well. Careful it's, how you phrase this, Matthew. It's one of those situations where um, it's a slippery slope. Because if if we if we look at it from the perspective of we like money, then <laughs> the, ah yes, the Mister Krabs perspective. Then summer's game, summer summer games money. fest is very quickly going to turn into mobile game fest. True. Um, so I of am of the opinion that no, there is not a place for mobile games in Summer Games Fest. So I understand. Get your that. own. Fuck off. I, <laughs> I understand your thought process. Um, at the same time, Summer Game Fest itself uh, was kind of mid. With this was the best commercial. We I saw. agree. This was the best commercial we saw. We both said we could have watched. More I of listen. That. I I'm a complicated. I'm a human being. I'm very complicated. Right. I agree. It was great advertising and made me almost want to play a game. I fucking hate you, mobile games. I don't ever want to see you again. You're not real games. Controversy. <laughs> Number three, the Communication Workers of America has filed unfair labor practice charges against Lion Bridge Technologies, which Microsoft has been working with as a QA contractor on Activision tech or Activision projects. The filing claimed that Lion Bridge laid off the entire team after workers had engaged in collective action and their working conditions. In addition, it accused the QA firm of offering severance packages with overly broad confidentiality terms which allegedly involves staff having to waive labor law rights, which are protected by the National Labor Relations Act. The filing also claimed workers were told the layoffs were the result of a project ending. However, the CWA noted that term, that teams working on said project in Mexico and Poland were not let go. The CWA also alleged that Lion Bridge had previously engaged in union busting in 2016 when it laid off all union employees in Bellevue, Washington, shortly after a group of temporary workers signed their first union contract. Uh, so, hey, we're unioning and anti-unions all over again with a company that I had not heard of. Yeah. Everyone's doing it. Yeah. Jazz hands. All right. Jazz hands. Yeah. Number four, Summer Games Fest has come and gone. True. I think we agreed that Microsoft stole the show with their showcase. Easily. But how did the games do with the press? Which ones were making headlines and stealing the spotlight? <laughs> Gaming, analy <clears throat> analytic. Gaming analytic company Fan Census has used their Flare score to rank the games rather than just considering quantity of articles. Fan Census Flare score also considers numerous other metrics, including reach of approximately 3,000 featured websites, the split between headlining articles and those that merely mentioned the title, and presence of articles on websites front page. Uh, essentially, it gives you an overall score that focuses on quality, not just quantity, awarding a score out of 100. Here's the top 20 of SGF ranked by Flare Score. Let me open the link so I get the not, full. Say, and Matt will now actually tell you that. Well, I do not open it. What, um, do, you, what, do, what do I think they are? Yeah, uh, this guy over here knows exactly where I'm going with this. I'm like, perfect time to quiz Nate. <laughs> I do not have it open. I okay. Am, I am looking at the next story, which is let me let me show. specify that this is Summer Games Fest and the Xbox Game Show and case. the Xbox. Okay, um, and I will tell you what the chart looks like. Okay, on the left column, it's a rank one through twenty. Yep. Then the title of the game. Okay. Then the event that it was in. Okay. And then the estimated airtime. And then the flare school. Like length of airtime? Yes. Okay. It's kind of like, I think it's just there as a reference. It's not right. really. It's just like how long it was on screen for. Yes. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I'm going to guess. Do you want me to go from the top? You, what do you want to do? I'm going to go from the top because it'll be easier. Probably the easiest, yeah. <laughs> because going from the bottom. Going from the bottom, like, real rough. <laughs> it'd, be a, it'd be a really wild move. I'm like, the 20th best one there was blank. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to guess that out of the top five, four of them were an Xbox. Um, I will give you out of the top five, five of them are from Xbox. Okay. That's my, that was what my heart said, but I was like, there might be a sneaky something. Out of the so, top ten, eight of them are on Xbox. Okay. So number one is Doom. That is not correct. Ooh, shit. It's more obvious. More obvious? Yes. You're thinking the flare score is basically what was talked about the most. Oh, what was talked about the most. Essentially, like, what got the most uh, attention via internet. They just say it in a fancy way. God, it's it's, it's quantity here. and quality. You're totally, you're going to hear it and be like, obviously. It's not Flight Sim. What does, it's so obvious. What's the biggest game every year? Oh, Call of Duty. Yes. <laughs> you're like, wow, brain fart. <laughs> um, I'm still not used to them being I agree. At Xbox. So ignoring that, you are correct. Number two is Doom. Is Doom. Okay. Um, do you want to keep going at all? You want to start are, are these? Off? These are ranked, and again, these are ranked not by quality, but just by time. These and are ranked by their so-called flare score, which is um, how popular they were on the internet. Yes. Okay. And they okay. factor in not just quantity of articles, but like how many articles right, were right, was right. it the main topic? You know that type of thing. So after those two, Perfect Dark. Um, actually, no, Perfect Dark was number eight. Okay, flight sim. Nope, not on there at all. I, I'm just gonna start ripping through them, and you can tell me how you feel about it. Oh, God damn, I was gonna play the game and guess all twenty, and you just place them as I go. I would be here. We'd be here all night. That's not true. <laughs> I can get to the. I can get through the top ten. Okay, all right, we'll go top ten. Flight sim is not in the top ten. Flight sim is not on the list. Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones is not in the top ten. Wow. See, Perfect the dark. problem is, is you gotta think. You're thinking. Mecha Blaze. You're you're or in Mecha, our bubble. Mecha whatever. You, yeah. Well, no. Mecha break? Nope. Not on the list. Song of the South. That's how it's called. It's called <laughs> Mid, Mid, South Midnight. Not on the list. Sea of Thieves. Not on the list. You're thinking you got to. No, you, I'm just going. I'm just naming every Xbox thing. Assassin's Creed. N- not on the list because it wasn't a part of it. It was in there. Was it in there? Yes. It was well, it's on the list. Um. The Japanese game. Not on the list. I don't know what you're talking about, but there's... Uh, okay, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so Call of Duty, Doom. Yep. Gears of War. Yep. Avowed. Why? I don't want to... That, that... Listen, fine. It can be fourth on this list. I don't get it. I don't. I don't get the So, hype. I think I'm it's con- a couple things. Am I confused? Um, or is it prevalent on the internet because everybody is in the same boat as I am where they're like, what is happening? No, I don't think so. I think, I think there's a couple things going on here. I think obsidian is kind of a household name now. True. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. Um, and yeah. And I think, I think this is kind of skewed in a way because, you know, the art you're gonna get articles of things that developers are like giving yeah. interviews for. So yeah. I think it might be a little skewed. Um so where were we? Four four was about five Dragon Age. Yep. Okay. Six Lego Horizon Adventures. Oh okay. Um seven Valorant. Why? Oh, you know Assassin's Creed was on this is my bad. Eight was Perfect Dark. <laughs> All right, eight, <laughs> eight is perfect. Dark. Sure you're telling me fables on the list. Uh, uh, nine is uh, Assassin's Creed. Well, it was not okay. Come on, now it's even worse. If, oh, if it was, would, why, why is it, it was still 10? in the top ten. If you had told me it was not on the list, that's bad enough. But if it had been like eighteen, I would have forgiven you. But it was I don't nine. Know, I didn't <laughs> see it. It's PTSD. I didn't see it. Um, number ten is Metal Gear Salad. Eleven is Civ Seven. Metal Gear being up there is interesting. 
It's do people actually Metal, 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 Gear. Metal Gear and Civ ending the top ten? I find really interesting when I would have thought it was other things. I, I, I figured they would have been in the list, but not in the top ten. Uh, Stalker two, twelve. Yeah. All right. Indiana Jones thirteen. What was eleven? Eleven was Civ. Oh. Well, Oh, nine, yeah, nine was no, Assassin's yep, Creed. Yep, Ten. Yep, yep. Sorry. Uh, fourteen. Life is strange. Ugh, God, why is that in the top twenty? Fifteen. Monster Hunter. Okay. Sixteen. State of Decay. Okay. Seventeen. Black Myth. Wukong. Yep. Eighteen. Diablo Four. Okay. Nineteen. Dragon Ball. I want one of these to shock me. Twenty. Harry Potter. Quidditch Champions. Never mind. It's hoping for like the uh, the South game or no. Um. Not uh, Wu Kang, Lo Wu Kang, or whatever the yeah, yeah, other one would have been up there. Yeah, 30, 33. Oh, yeah, that's right. 33. Mm-hmm. Priest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think the list, I, I get what what they're going for. Right. But I, I do think they're saying that it's it's skewed a little yeah. bit because you're playing, you're gonna get of, more of what people deck. are willing to talk about, right? Which is not what I want to talk about, yeah. I don't want to know what you're willing to talk about. I want to know your deepest, darkest yeah. secrets. What are you hiding? Who's Tell in Jeff's secrets. basement? Exactly. It's Where is Kojima? Kojima? <laughs> yeah. So shall we talk about number five? Yes. Shall we talk about the recap in French? Yes. I had to. I had to make my own recap. Did you? So you had to watch it? No, I. Uh, <laughs> I did watch it. Oh, okay. I did watch it, but there wasn't a good recap. I see. I skipped that was it that day. I didn't. I didn't get to watch it live. There wasn't a good recap that had literally everything, and then they didn't have it. I I wanted a recap that was roughly in order and roughly roughly covered everything. How dare you expect bare minimum from a recap? So then I had to like fucking find a bunch of recaps and just start like fucking sticking them together and making my own. So so I already have problems with the fact that. Uh, Skull and Bones has the second longest list on <laughs> of, yeah. of details. It's not like a I know. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just there for ease of listing. Yeah. So here we go. Ubisoft had their conference on Monday, and this is what we talked about: Star Wars Outlaws. We're starting off with a live orchestra playing some music to accompany an extended new trailer showing gameplay narrated by the game's director. Get some ship combat, non-ship combat. It's a, he suddenly said shit combat. I was like, <laughs> going right into it. Uh, uh, creative director Julian Geraghty came on stage to discuss more about the story. A large trailer showing gameplay, story, and beautiful settings. And it is available August 30th. Um, so you know what that means? What's that? I'm not playing it. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's because uh, uh, fucking 28th? 26th. 26th. <laughs> Four days earlier before that. So that is the first. I had a dream. That is the first weekend while I was out. I had a dream. All right. I'm okay. And maybe a nightmare. Ooh, never mind. Um, where you were raiding. You had a raid. Now, now this, this is a nightmare. <laughs> and I took time <laughs> off of work to be support. To cook you meals <laughs> and support your rating endeavor. I so I want you see this. the dream nightmare thing there where I'm like I say I, want I mean this. if you ask if you're like listen we're we're racing you know I'd be like hell yeah but I'm just like why is this the dream I'm having where like my I'm dreaming that I'm literally like let me service you we are lovers that's true. But I was just like, this is interesting. I think, honestly, I think if I did request that, the only person that would genuinely have a complaint with me is your wife. She would. She would. <laughs> she and I'd be 100% serious, because I'd be like, we need to have a day where we plan meals. What do you want to eat? Yeah. What are we doing? Listen, we're like, gonna, we're, we're doing this. Like, fine. We Hey, listen, she's not going to let me stay the entire time and, like, live cook you things, so we're going to take one big day beforehand. Yep. We're going to have gonna frozen pr- burritos. Yeah, we're going to have, gonna like... <laughs> um. <laughs> Why are you? Why are you, I don't know. It's such a. I see what you mean by dream nightmare, man. That is a dream of mine and a nightmare. Of yours. Well, it's just like I don't. Ninety nine percent of the time, I don't remember my dreams. I woke up this morning and I'm like, "What the fuck was that?" Um, oh, that was that recent. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Uh, now that's even weirder. So, what'd you think of that? Did you watch the Outlaws thing? Well, now I'm thinking about you making me food while I raid. 
That's um, weird. Can you imagine? What no what a life? No, the closest I can imagine that to is our Fallout adventures where you brought pizza. Oh, that's true. Um, that was a good time. It was a good time. Um, hell, I can't even imagine actually rating at a level where I like actively needed food ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Launch nights are different because you know you're going to be there for a while. Yeah. But like all my raid nights are normally three hours. I don't really mm-hmm. need food other than maybe a snack or like yeah. get up and hit the bathroom. But um, anyway, so I, I did. It still looks really good. I but it's it's there's still that there's a voice in the back of my head going don't a hundred percent I it's still it still looks too good to be true so I'm like and then there's the the fucking meme you sent me today it made me so happy oh yeah the open world first Star Wars oh, open world Star Wars game or whatever yeah and everybody's like uh, Swotor and uh, galaxies hello yeah these exist um uh but yeah so it is. It is one that I am excited for. I will play it at some point. Um, mm. It might be one of my later like fall games or something, because I think the fall for me is kind of looking slow. So that'll probably be my my timing of it. Um, but at the same time, I'd like the August 30th date if I didn't have something else going on. Yeah. Um, it's a good, there's not really much else if you're not me going on. Yeah. So. I'm sure. Well, yeah, I'm sure they're probably pissed about the, the, the wow thing, but whatever. Well, they can also just say two weeks later. Yeah. They can still delay if they want to. Uh, yeah, I still have the hard too good to be true feelings. And um, I want it to be good. Same. I do definitely want it to be good. And it's still massive. And I, I will always mm-hmm. say that I back Ubisoft massive to usually make something good. Oh, yeah. There's definitely a chance. So there's a chance. It's just. So it's just, you're saying there's a chance. It's just scary. It's just like, I don't know. And then we moved on to their next attempted big hit, X Defiant, getting a new trailer showcasing a new faction, new weapons, and committing to a new map a month. Capture the Flag was announced and ranked progression all for season one coming on July 1st. So, hey, do you need another multiplayer shooter? Apparently, people like it. I don't know. It's hard for me to believe. Then we go on to the biggest joke probably in this entire thing. Got him. Skull and Bones! Got a new trailer for Season 2, The Chorus of Havoc, available now. A new ship called The Brig. A new sea monster called Jason Statham. The Megalodon. New festive events, Dragon's Regatta. Community requested features also added, such as fleet management. Hysterical that you can't manage a fleet in a game of ships by default before the community had to tell you you should have that. (laughs) New modes for solo and PvP. Season 3 Into the Dragon's Wake is announced. New sea monster. Flying dragon. 5v5 PvP mode included in the free trial of the game. So they're still making things for it. They lost me when the guy came. I'm assuming, I don't know if he's a creative director or community manager or something like that. But he came on and was like, we just want to thank you guys for a super successful, like, first season. And, like, he was going off, you know, doing the normal. Too much. Yeah, and I was just like, well, this is a bunch of fucking lies and deceit. And then I kind of tuned out until they were done with. I mean, they might, there might be a vocal minority, which just happens to also be the majority because it's a vocal minority in the gaming sphere. Yeah. But all seven of the people playing it are really loud. Yeah. They're all whales. Uh, then we go to Gwen Berholt, director of Prince of Persia series, comes on stage, talks about some Prince of Persia. Got three new announcements for that. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, got a new update. And it is available. Now. Right now. Divine Trials, Combat Challenges, Revisited Bosses, Puzzle Challenges, Platform Challenges, New Ambulance, and Story DLC coming in September. Good that they're doing more of that. I mean, that game was really liked when it came out, so. Mm -hmm. The Rogue, Prince of Persia. Additional content update, The Temple of Fire out now. New mobs and new weapons. And Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time remake is given a teaser 
with a 2026 release trailer. How many times has this been announced? I now? don't know, but I, I think believe it's the third Ubi- time. I believe Ubisoft were like the only ones to do any to dare to do anything in 26. Yeah, of course. Everybody else was like, we're not talking about anything later than 25. Yeah. And so. it's funny because I do genuinely think this is the third time that they've announced this. Probably true, yeah. Rocksmith Plus was given a new trailer. Surprise that's not out yet. I think it it's it's is it not? I don't know. That but it says new trailer. I would have thought it was out. I think it is out. I think they just kind of were like reminding people. Yeah, here's all the things you can do now. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora was given an accolade trailer with appearances from content creators and story pack one. The Skybreaker is coming on July 16th, 2024. Does anybody remember that game exists? You know what's funny is uh I guess it's good because it's basically like I think we talked about it when it's it came Far Cry. Out. Yeah, but it's like a it's like a good ref- refined version of Far Cry. Right. It's probably what they should have done to six and then mm-hmm. they but had like a story I think, written for them, so it was easier. I don't know what the numbers are, but since they're not touting them, I'm assuming they weren't great. Gotcha. Gregory Corgi talks to us about the crew motorfest upcoming season four. It's only season four. I feel like they've been out longer for more seasons. Called Donk versus Lowrider, with a new trailer for the Chase Squad coming into in November. <laughs> Season five will include a new island in Hawaii for free. It will also include Made in Japan too. How do you get to Hawaii in the Crew Motorfest? Drive onto a ferry, hit a loading screen, and then get there. Wow. There it is, folks. I mean, Motorfest technically gives you access to planes, so you fly the whole way. Mm, I forget that that's like a that's planes, trains, and automobiles yep. situation. Although there's no trains, so. Yeah, John Candy is in the game. That would be amazing. His corpse. Oof. Anos 117 Pax Ramona is announced with a trailer. Wish list now. Do it. Then we get a trailer montage. For Honor trailer showing Year 8 Season 2, the Murasama Blade, starting July 13th. Brawlhalla got a shout-out. Crew Motorfest got a second shout-out. Monopoly is on its way in September 2024. Trackmania, shout-out. Riders Republic, shout-out. New season on July 19th, or June 19th. Um, and Battlecore Arena Early Access is available for free on Ubisoft Connect, Steam, and Epic Game Store. Then... As per usual, we must talk about Assassin's Creed. It is our obligated company goal. <laughs> a live performance by Tycho Project. Game director Charles Benoit is on stage talking about the setting, story, and characters of the game. Uh, ga- extended gameplay trailer showing uh, Naoi Nisake's uh, gameplay coming November 15th. And just other things that we've learned since they first showed it off. Uh, I have more to say about that, but we'll say more about that in a minute. Ubisoft Plus trailer montage with all the games available on the service of Ubisoft Plus. Yves Guimont came on stage with other Ubisoft employees to say thanks for their hard work and dedication. And viva la France. Um, and then some post-show stuff. Uh, and then, you I, can, then I, I double down. And yeah, the, you can play I as one of <laughs> you can play as one of the protagonists for most of the game. Quote, our new exploration loop is more about playing Sherlock Holmes a little bit and having to work for the reward at the at the end. And the map size is roughly similar to Origins and does not encompass the whole of Japan. So, good. Uh, but I saw some people... Uh, I guess they could be large critiques, but I think they're mostly minor critiques, technically. Okay. Um that were taking the shots of like the fighting in the village areas and stuff like that. And like the combat Mm -hmm. and they're like, man, they really just went for attempting to give you ghost of Tsushima. Like they saw that combat style and were like, give it that. But then they were complaining about like the fact that like, uh, what is it? Uh, parsimones or whatever the, that fruit is were like there and they're like, well, that means it's October, which means that these shouldn't be in bloom, which means like, and like they were just like ripping like the up. entire thing about like being lore accurate. And there's like, there's no way these seasons all collided. This doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And then also ripped apart the fact of like where 
logos were on armor and whatever in statues and artwork that they had were like that doesn't make sense that's not correct um and then i believe they sent two japanese creators like a collector edition that maybe included a statue that the japanese creators made it like that's not right that's not right that's not right and hey these two these two japanese symbols on this box mean the same thing except one is written incorrectly and so it was just like oh yeah, it's it's kind of uh I I kind of I've I'm like torn on on Assassin's Creed and and how they present it because in some way they do kind of present it like oh this is you know historically accurate this story is not real but it takes place in a historically accurate time period. True. But then it it's never right. Right. So it's like I feel like if you're going to do one or don't. Yeah, you if you're going to give that presentation and then kind of double down on it by having like the the history walk tour things that they build into the games and stuff. Right, right. You right. you probably should do it right. Um I don't know. I for some reason like I just can't get into this game. Like I should hit like I generally like Assassin's Creed games. Um I like Japanese culture. I love Ghost of Tsushima. You know, all that good stuff. Watch a bunch of anime. Like, I should like this game. I should be interested in this game. And for some reason, it turns me off. But, I don't know. I don't know. It's not, I don't know if it's like turning me off enough to not play it. Mm -hmm. But it is... um... Their their hit record isn't good. Mm-hmm. It's like every other right now. Yeah, which for me means this one should hit in the way that I've enjoyed them. Origins hit, Odyssey miss, Valhalla hit, Mirage miss. Mm. This should be hit, and if it's not, then that's 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 a worse trend. I'm also kind of concerned, um, but I I can also pass up the all the environment things. So like I don't know the seasons in Japan. Yeah. I'm also concerned about those two comments taken in conjunction of the map size being similar to Origin, yep, and the exploration being more Sherlock Holmes like, where you're supposed to like dig in more. Right. What does that mean? Like, did you? double down on like collectibles or something in a weird way to where like oh they're little puzzles you gotta solve where it's like bro your map's fucking huge you can't do that to me like right because depending on what they did for if you like ride to a place and you ride have to play solve solve puzzle time and then get up and then just ride to the next one and it's you just riding to crime scenes or you know riding yeah. to investigate that seems pretty disingenuous and kind of terrible mm-hmm. um so yeah i don't i don't know i don't really know what they always what like sherlock holmes doing sherlock holmes the best way you could was doing batman arkham asylum yeah i guess we'll see the intentions and also it's funny where they're like or does eagle vision actually mean something too that's the that would option. be yeah and then, like them referring to, because like I, you don't get the text, the the context of the statement, because we just pulled the one line out as far as map size goes. But in the context of the article, they were almost inferring that they downsized the map, which might be factually true, right? But Origins map was still so big, yes, arguably still too big, right? Because you got to the end of the game where you're in the lush, the upper corner there, wherever the fuck it was. And at that point, I was just like burnt out. Right. I was like, I'm good. Let's just get through this. Yeah, there there definitely was a lot. It, and no matter what, always, there's been like, same thing happened to Valhalla. Yep. I mean, obviously, I reached a point way earlier, but like Valhalla, you got to the end and you're like, okay, not only does the story not end, painful. And then there was whole sections you go to where, like... There's like, nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> you were just there to, like, kind of take it over, and it was just, hey, defeat these two strongholds, and then you get the area, and it's like, all right, I guess. Yeah, and this map is huge. All right. Anything else you want to say about Assassin's Creed or Ubisoft? 
No. Okay. Let me let me ro- roll through these. Yeah, Usopp was um I don't want to say it was disappointing, but it was definitely mediocre. Especially considering no Beyond Good or Evil 2. No Splinter. No Splinter Cell. No Ghost Recon. Yep. Nothing like surprising at all. I mean, maybe they want all the attention on Star Wars Outlaws. Which But you can still do that and then still announce what's coming after that. Yeah. And not be um something in twenty twenty six. Yep. All right, number six. So like Star Wars Outlaws is this year, but our next grandiose thing comes out next fall, and it's this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, number six, Dragon Age Valgard was revealed. According to Bioware, the storyline for the game is as follows. Solace does manage to go through his tearing ritual to open the veil, only to see a backfire due to the player character named Rook uh, intervening. Freeing two of Solace's most powerful and relentless adversaries among the elven gods, it will be up to Rook and the party to clean up their own mess and stop these godlike beings from ravaging Thetis, all the while fighting other menacing foes like Venatori cultists, demons of the Fade, Darkspawn, and more. The 15-minute reveal was the beginning of the game, apparently when Solace tears open the veil. The developers are promising more of everything, more of Thetis, uh, more biomes will be the biomes will be as diverse as bustling cities like lush lush uh, tropics, boreal forests, forbidding swamps, and the deepest dungeons. Uh, the developers also promised quote some of the most compelling individual storylines end quote in the franchise history. Uh, the seven companions, um, which there's a veil jumper. There's a whole slew of them. There's a veil jumper, a gray warden, a necromancer. Um, Harding is a previous character that's returning, a mage killer, a detective, and a dragon hunter. Uh, We'll provide expansive and dynamic stories exploring love and loss, and players will affect both your relationship with the individual companions and with the whole group. Each companion comes with their own skill tree and specialized gear. Also, players will get the most powerful character creator and franchise yet with a vast range of customization options. You can select from multiple races, um, you'll also be able to choose a f- starting faction as part of the character's background. There'll be six choices in the area, Grey Wardens, Shadow of Dragons, Shadow Dragons, and Teven Crows, among others. In terms of character progression, players will be able to customize their playthrough, um, through skill trees for three different classes, uh, Warrior, Mage, and Rogue. As previously rumored, there won't be any direct control of the other two members of the party, but the ability wheel allows players to perform Specific skills against any given target. So very Mass Effect-esque. Which was a criticism that I saw. Was that a few um, publications or people or whatever said, you know, it's Dragon Age converging onto Mass Effect, essentially. Right, which... Logistically, it makes sense to me. I well, I understand why, but because there's the majority of me going, how small is Bioware now? Who yes. is left? Yes, and is it the Bioware devs, or sorry, is it the Mass Effect devs? Then you're kind of fucked. Yeah, I mean, you're essentially that, and they're essentially going to be wanting to build systems that they can move over into Mass Effect as well. So potentially, yeah. Um, all the it it. The dialogue, the combat, like the skill tree, like the, not skill tree, the radial menu, all that. It's going to be directly lifted into the next Max Effect game. Yep. All right, I'll finish the rest of this crap, then we can start talking about it. Uh, some other stuff that was mentioned in articles. Dragon Age the Valguard won't be an open world. It will be mission-based for the most part, although one of the game directors said, quote, once you get past a certain point, the game opens up dramatically, end quote. Which I assume probably just means you can start just picking missions at random and go through things. That's, I think, a fair assumption. But at the same time, I don't hate that. I don't either. I love that. I did much. You can tailor things much more, and you can tell a better way, and tell a story, which is what you should be doing in Dragon yeah. Age. And that was what they said was, um, they looked at criticisms from the previous previous games and stuff like that, and basically it was like it's not worth it. We can build a better story if we keep it linear. Um, 
There will also be some nudity for certain sex scenes, depending on how spicy the companion is. Bioware stressed that the writers have strived to make friendships just as compelling as romances for those pe- players who'd rather stick to that type of relationship. Is it just going to be like peppers next to the relationship bar? Maybe. For how spicy they are. <laughs> uh, Dragon Age the Valguard has choices from previous games baked into the character creator. Well, players will have the opportunity to fully recreate their own Inquisitor from their previous title. Yeah, I remember what my choices were. Yeah, right. They also get to select what happened to their version of the previous stories. Mind you, I believe that was... Twenty fifteen, too long ago. Nine years ago. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember either. I am weirdly indifferent. I'm I, surprised by my lack of any emotion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I know. I mean, I know what you mean, because it's unlike with the Assassin's Creed stuff where, like, I feel like I know how I want to feel of trepidatious almost kind of going, like, apprehensive looking at it. Mm -hmm. And then this is like, this isn't the outlaws where it's like too good to be true. Mm -hmm. And it's not the fear that I have of Assassin's Creed. It's this middle nothing I, burger where I'm like... My issue is I don't know what I want from it. Right. I don't... Like, what am I asking for at this point? Mm-hmm. Uh, what am I... What are you showing me? And what am I... Am I... I don't think I'm going to know until I'm at two hours in and I go, fuck. Yeah. 100%. That's a, that's, that is it right there. I'm it'll, not... I'm going to get... It'll in. either be this clicks mm-hmm. or there's going to be a glaring issue two hours in that I can't shake. Yep. Yep, I feel like um, I feel like that's hundred percent true, and it's been bothering me all week. And uh, us talking it out has made me feel a little better about it. Because I'm just like, what I don't know what to do about your feelings or lack thereof. Yeah, talk about it. Talk about your nothingness. <laughs> Something was bothering me about it, and I just put my finger on it. That it's like, oh, because I don't care. Like either way, like I'm not offended by this, but I'm also not like frothing this, at the mouth this, to get this it. This entire time we've been going like for us going back to last year this entire time we've been saying this game doesn't come out this year it's not real yeah so we've set our expectations in a place to not know how to handle it showing up i know i i didn't expect it to them to just i didn't not only did i not expect it to be out in a timely manner i did not expect them to be so bullish about it right so now now i'm confused a little scared a little excited, a little like, right? I don't know what this and is. The entire time that we were pretending that it wasn't coming out this year, that we had thought, no, that's next year. Mm-hmm. Our entire process was, I don't know what they're going to do, but this decides Bioware. Yeah. And so we've been looking at it from a company standpoint going, do they live or do they die? And then they go, oh, we have the game and it's this year. And now we're going, I don't know how to judge whether you live or die on this. <laughs> yeah. I don't have uh, enough information now to make any informed opinion in one way or the other. I don't either. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're into the we're up up the creek without a paddle right now. So we'll I don't figure even know it out. what creek we're up. I don't know either. I don't even know if it's a creek. Are we sitting in a kayak in a desert? I don't know. <laughs> I'm in an oasis, man. Um, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Uh, I from what I read, um, I'm like. I'm all over the place. I'm I'm a little disappointed that they leaned more into the action RPG side of it, but I guess that's to be expected because that's what's selling. Um well now I'm a little interested because they hyped up like the character creator and the skill trees and stuff. Like yeah, there's only three classes, but I guess like they split into specializations and okay. those specializations have like really in depth skill trees. Okay. Um so there's like a wa- a lot of weird stuff where there seems to be a lot of depth that they're talking about. They talk about it seems like almost like they're going more persona with it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um I don't know if that's like an accurate. That was the feeling I got by what they were trying to highlight. Right. 
in all these different articles that the interviews they did. Um, and I, honestly, the most criticism I saw online was people complaining about that. It was essentially fantasy mass effect. So we'll see. Yeah. Time for the rumor roundup. I didn't go hard with the rumors this, this week. Nah, it's probably for the better. Mainly because a lot of the rumors already got dispelled. Yeah, usually po- post games. <laughs> usually, I I try to dig deep and find some wonky shit because the people who like are doing these these rumor communities, they are pretty they're pretty fucking crazy. And I but it's like fun to like see yeah to look at their like connections their, and be like their red web of craziness. Yeah, because it's like you look at it and like you're fucking nuts, but like there's a world where you're right, like. Microsoft's rumored Xbox Gamescom 2024 showcase is said to be a major event. According to Xbox Insider and Kind of Funny Xcast, RIP, uh, Paris Lily. They killed Xcast, if you didn't know. I did not know that. They killed everything except for uh, Gamescast or Games Daily or whatever. Like they merged them all. They merged them. Yeah. That makes sense. All the specific ones are gone. They're kind of like, I feel, I don't know. I, I, I don't look or I don't follow them anymore, but I'm kind of assuming they're moving. I don't want to say away from games, but like more of a grab bag. Yeah. Catch all. Whatever mm-hmm. Obsidian Entertainment has briefly mentioned the avowed release date, but the mention was quickly scrubbed from existence. That existence and date was November 12th, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't scrub it fast enough. Nope. Never do. Xbox is said to have secured a deal with Panache Digital of the studio from the mastermind behind Assassin's Creed and Prince of Persia Sands of Time. The leaker does mention that the project will run in Unreal 5, and the project is targeting a 2026 or 27 release. Founded in 2014, Panache Digital Games released Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey in 2019. The Verge's Tom Warren provides some release window info. He's heard about some of the Microsoft upcoming games, per Warren. The new Fable is currently slated to arrive sometime between October and December of 2025. As for Gears of War, E-Day has heard it will arrive sometime in 2025, perhaps before Fable is released, and uh, cautions that Gears plans may have changed and that the lack of an official release window may be to give developers some breathing room. Mm Mm-hmm. That would make sense. Um... I'm assuming that's also why they quickly scrub the avowed release date because they're like, oh, we don't want to hold into that. Yeah, I would uh, believe that to be true as well. Mm-hmm. All right, now we uh, for the questionable things we didn't write full paragraphs on. Woo-hoo. Idios Montreal or Idios Idos Idios Idios amigo. <laughs> I understand your French. Andale. I understand your French, but I only speak Idos. Spanish. Idos. I don't know how to fucking say it ever. I've heard it said like eight different ways. Um, the Square Enix owned studio is aiding Playground Games on the upcoming Fable reboot. What did they get done aiding on the fucking, or no, I guess that was, no, no, that was Square stuff. So they get done aiding on fucking Perfect Arcs. So now they can help on this. I know. It's kind of wild. It's just Square Enix just a support, just a bunch of support studio. They sold off the rest of their shit. That's true. Era History Told. Is it History Told or History Untold? What did I think untold. it was? Untold fucking twat i thought i thought it was too maybe it auto corrected era history untold microsoft's 4x turn-based game launches on pc including pc game pass on, on september 24th capcom says resident evil village has reached 10 million units in sales and is the fastest in the series to reach that milestone gamestop reported a 26 percent decrease in in sales to $882 million compared to $1.2 billion the previous year. Uh, it's insane to me that those numbers are still that high. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3. That was the other thing. That just reminded me. A lot of the other criticisms I saw for Dragon Age was that it wasn't Baldur's Gate 3. Okay. And they were like, why? A lot of people were like, why didn't you just make Baldur's Gate 3? It's super popular. Okay. Baldur's Gate 3 is not 
the rule. Not right, every... It is fully an exception. It is the exception to the rule. So copying Baldur's Gate 3, A, would be a bad idea. Bioware, not capable of that at this point. True. Not safe at all because Baldur's Gate 3 was the exception to the rule. How many cl- giant classic RPGs are doing fucking gangbusters right now? Anyways, moving on. Baldur's Gate 3 has won a Nebula Award for game writing. It beat out Alan Wake 2, The Bread Must Rise, Chance of Sinar, Dredge, and Nine Fox Gambit. And in case you're curious, the Nebula Awards annually recognize the best works of science fiction or fantasy published in the United States. From Software's president, uh, Titaki Miyazaki, Titaka Miyazaki, is not opposed to the release of a Bloodborne PC port, and many from software want a PC port, but the ball is in Sony's court, as we all know. Yeah, it's been in their court for fucking ever. And they squander it because they're a bunch of idiots. PlayStation support for Discord voice chat direct from console will be rolling out in the coming weeks. Epic Games has announced that the Epic Games Store and Fortnite will be available on iOS in Japan in late 2025. Summer Games Fest will return to LA in June 2025. Elden Ring has shipped 25 million units worldwide. It's big numbers. Yeah. Netflix's VP of Games, Mike Verdu, is taking on a new role as the company ramps up its ambitions in the video game space. Uh, The details of his new position are unclear at this time, but it involves, quote, innovation in game development, end quote. Steam is facing a 656 million pound collective action claim brought forward by a digital rights campaigner who has accused Valve of using market dominance to overcharge 14 million UK consumers. Microsoft's Phil Spencer has addressed the backlash to Xbox's recent studio closures. Quote, in the end, I've said over and over, I have to run a sustainable business inside the company and grow. And that means sometimes I have to make hard decisions that frankly are not decisions I love, but decisions that somebody needs to go make. End quote. And then Apple has announced a free update in its gaming porting toolkit for Sequoia OS on Mac with a number of games receiving official Mac ports as a result. It adds support for Intel's advanced vector extensions to ray tracing, improved compatibility with Windows games, and new shader debugging tools. And you can put the icons anywhere on the screen. Icons. God, they're fucking all their announcements piss me off. Yeah. You know what pisses me off? Um, I, I had to put, uh, I had to load up Windows 11 on a PC uh, yesterday, last night. And, uh, you know, I'm greeted with the fresh, fresh install of Windows 11. Okay, yeah. And I immediately was annoyed by its default arrangement of being Mac-ish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what they do. Yeah. They're like, hey, we heard you guys like Macs. You yeah. want to wanna come in? We're going to slide these. These, this taskbar to the center of the screen. I mean, you just move it back. Yeah, yeah. and then we're gonna make this right click be all fucking weird. <laughs> and oh, you can't change that in the settings. You gotta do some registry edit shit for that. Fucking twat. I just got used to it. I, I see. This is the this myself. is the constant battle too, because it's like obviously the taskbar moves to the left, no big deal. Sure, but the things like the right click, do you? It's a philosophical thing. Do you change it back or you just say, I need to get used to it because this is how it's going to be going forward? The second one. That's what you did. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> so I, it, it's a funny thing at work, too. Because same thing, you know, you go to Windows 11, you get a bunch of people that basically have that exact same reaction of like, oh, that's not where I remember this being. Yeah. So they're all, move, you know, we get a bunch of people that move the taskbar back to, to the left, whatever. Mine's still in the center of the screen for the most part. Yeah. Because that's just, I'm like, all right, it's just where it is now. I get used yeah. to this. I'm just going to live with it. And if they move not, back to the he's side. He's not quite. A couple more years. He'll get there. He's not old enough yet. If they move back to the side, they move back to the side. I was just like, oh, fucking, I don't give a shit. Um, 
and then you're like, kind oh, of in a different state though because you touch a lot of computers and they're like the right the right click's all weird and i'm like yeah but i purposely i like we had some people that i know that like were like i i can't deal with this menu and they force edited the other one back in and i was just like i i'm gonna get used to it because i'm not gonna go fuck with my home machine just to make the menus change like i'll just gonna I'll, I'll just learn man i'll be okay so that's the thing is i think there's a like i use literally like the same like two or three computers every single day yeah i think you touch more computers more often so Probably. like you're used to you know you have to be more fluid right i that's why i don't care so much where things are i just know how to bring them up yes what for me I, it was what uh, pisses me off the most about windows mm. the most is that they cannot agree as a company whether or not they should move forward or stay back in their uis mm -hmm. if you open the control panel it's the same menus we've had since 2004 yeah but if you right click anything it's 2024 yeah yeah guys Move the UI forward. It's okay. It's just not cohesive. It's so annoying to open up one and then get blasted by 20 years back menus. And I'm yeah. like, guys, stop this. Yeah. Anyways. <sighs> what else are we up to? Um, not too much. It's been seven days. What have you been up to? Not much. Nailed it. Not much. Um. What is, what is what is new? What is new? Oh, we started watching the Acolyte, which is the. How far are you in? I am current. I have heard nothing good. It's it is I think it's mainly the most recent episode. I think three. From what I've witnessed via my whatever small algorithm the internet is deciding to pump into my fucking head, and my coworkers, it is probably the most polarizing Star Wars show, show yet. Yeah, so I've seen nothing good. I've seen a couple, like, I say I've seen nothing good. I've seen a couple takes that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like, people saying it's good because this, and I'm like, uh, like, saying that, um, the, f uh, spoilers, I guess, if you haven't watched Acolyte, um, but saying that the force is the thread, and it's like, yeah, but it's not. And they're like, well, it's good to see that somebody might have interpreted the force differently or something like that. That I'm was like, never in question. But I'm like, the the discussion around there's not an interpretation of the force. The force is just a known thing that has quantifiable numbers. So that's what I, that confused me. And then they're like, oh, there's these all women planets, and I'm like, also have existed. Yeah. You That's, guys just never read the books. This is, this is, yes. So, uh, from everyone I've talked to, it's literally straight down the middle. Half the people have been like, I like it, and half the people have been like, I hate it. And then, like, I get fed the, you know, the okay, fucking... And then do you ask the, what more, what, what more do you know about Star Wars? Yeah. Because that'll probably tell you where, how they ended up getting to that. And then I get fed the articles that are like, oh, people are hating on the Acolyte because it's diverse. And I'm like... Bro, you know, like, there's fucking aliens in Star Wars, right? Like, I don't know if you can get any more fucking diverse than that, all right? Like, yeah, I get what you're trying to say. There's Wookiees. But Star Wars has always been diverse, and my issue with the Acolyte isn't the fact that there's diversity in that. I like that. My issue with Star Wars the Acolyte is that it's written terribly. <laughs> Right, and it's just not interesting. And then I think I've summed it up. I had we talked about it for a little while, a little while at work, and I figured out what my issue is with all the new Star Wars shows, and it's the fact that they're all really short seasons. They're all like six to eight episodes, and they're okay. all thirty to forty five minute long episodes. Okay, there's not enough time for you to tell a compelling story in that amount of time in Star Wars. In if you not, were not in a universe that is already that well established, yes. If you're building on something else directly, you can do that. But if you're trying to do something like the Acolyte, where you're pulling from a totally new area, you need to spend some time making the viewer care about the that world 
those characters, those institutions. Like, we don't know the Jedi institution at that point in time. And the couple minutes I saw of it, I was like, ooh, I'm interested. And then guess what? Uh, we only got a minute and a half. You know, it's like... Yeah, yeah. And then you see these this coven of female witches, and it's like, I'm interested, but no, we're not going to tell you anything about them, or we're not going to establish it. We're just going to make them look like a knockoff of the witches of Dathomir. So that just annoys someone like me, who I'm like, if you're not going to like spend time establishing these entities, then don't use them. Use the established entity I already know so that I can deepen the interest right. and be in, in compelled by the story. Like, yeah, because then there's there's the bad writing of three of like, uh, what is I I I only know so much. I really want to just go into a whole review of episode three, so I really don't care yeah. that much. But, uh, sister basically threatens and attempts to kill her other sister for deciding to leave with a Jedi yeah. therefore killing the entire village. So it's like, you're the bad person. Mm -hmm. That was the other thing is like, I saw some theories on that and I, I, I agree. Like the only way that episode and that whole thing works is if we see it from multiple perspectives, which that might be what they're trying to do. Maybe. Like, you know, we saw it from Osha's perspective. Yeah. We might see it from her sister's perspective, and then we might see it from the Jedi's perspective. Right. Which, if that's what you do, great. I have no issues with that. But you didn't do a good job establishing that that might be that the case that's going to happen. Because right. Like all you, didn't, we saw... you didn't give us the cheap campfire scene, which is all you needed to do. Yeah. Where like, yeah. And then I saw, and then caught. All we saw was an episode of, you know, whatever, where a little girl lights a mountain of stone on fire. Why is the whole place on fire when it's made out of fucking stone? Right. Anyways. Not to mention the wind affected flame in space on the side of a ship. Yeah. Space suits being used as well. Yeah, it's just uh, bad, bad, bad. It's just like, I don't... Hey, whatever. Yeah, at this point, it's it's rough. There's... it. I've I've not so detached from star wars i guess is the am i still a star wars fan yeah i still enjoy a lot of aspects about it but when it comes to media lately like the uh the most recent saga solo um mando and or and this to say that they're 50 50 is generous as far as hitting yeah i think that they did episode seven fine because it's just a rehash essentially of five, you know five or whatever it, it's just meant to hit fan service flashpoints yeah and if you only leave it if you leave it at that and that's what you were going in with fine Yep. Eight and nine are bad. Nine, I forgive a little bit for trying to, because it was basically screwed over by eight. Mm -hmm. Eight was terrible. But if they had done eight as not a saga movie, like if they had done eight as like a solo or whatever, like a fully side yeah. thing, there's a chance that that's much better, but not with the idea that there's a linear story happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not to mention it fundamentally breaks like physic things in in lore. Mm. Tracking ships through light uh through jumps and then also blowing one up by using a warp drive. Like yeah. now we've started to just kind of blow everything up in terms of how things actually function. Yeah. Or had had functioned. Um Mando first season was good. Yeah, for sure. Mando's second season was okay. As it started to set up Mando and Friends season, and that's where I was like, "No, I don't. You don't use this season to just introduce your new season, your new season, mm -hmm. which is what they did with Ahsoka, and they did with Boba, yeah. and they did with all the other 
you know, Power Ranger episode and everything else. Um, Bo- Book of Boba Fett was just rough. Right, was rough. Ahsoka was rough-ish. Less rough than than Boba Fett. Yeah, but. which that kind of feeds into my argument is I think I, I don't like, I'm not a huge fan of Ahsoka as far as like that, those characters and stuff, but Ahsoka works because it's basically a direct sequel to Rebels. Right. So that's why it works better than the other some of the other shows. In Obi Wan, you're just touching characters you already know, so that's fine. Uh, Andor is good. Mm-hmm. Acolyte is meh so far to met meh to bad. Um, I'm sure there's another property I'm forgetting, but Solo was bad. Rogue One was great. There's just like. And the games have been fine. Mm-hmm. I, I, my biggest gripe with both the Jedi Survivor games is that the name is stupid. That's my biggest gripe <laughs> is that the name is dumb. And then I don't like, I don't like the the other thing I don't like about them is not the game's fault, but it's like hype around them. Mm-hmm. And people are like, so, I'm like, they're man, they're all right. Um, I don't care for everybody in Star Wars having a sidekick. Yeah. That's a different problem. Yeah, everyone needs a little robot, bro, or a little animal. They just need something. Um, and then my other problem is, is like a technical one with the first game where it feels like for some reason I'm on roller skates and I don't know why. I don't yeah. really know how else to. And the writing is w- a little weird between both of them. Mm-hmm. But that's whatever. You know, I, I live with those in a Star Wars game. They're just kind of, they're really there for combat and feel. And I'm, that's what I'm, I'm hoping to get that out of this. Mm-hmm. So. Out of Outlaws coming out, so yeah, it's it's just been a you know you get you you get your your certain people your bad one, dirt bird third shit Mister Bird. I'm like, oh my god, shut the fuck up. I'm like, you can you can be a fan of the franchise and then just be like, oh, but I don't like this stuff. Yeah, which is literally what Disney did when they bought it and went, we don't care about the expanded universe while staring at you and then going. Except for this bit and this bit. You can just do the same thing as a fan and be like, I don't care about this, but I like this and this and this and mm-hmm. this. Like, you can just pick parts you like. That's fine. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Live your life, man. But yeah, it do be what it do be. Yeah. I don't have anything else. What do you got going on? Uh, Played some War Within Beta. Mythic Ooh. Plus testing opened. So we were testing some of that. Tantalizing. Um, Titillating. Whew, hit bad. It bad. Yeah, not good. Like the the gameplay is fine or whatever. Oh. But it was like some of the dungeons need to be fully fully hands on for a while before they're like ready for Mythic Plus, I think. Mm. Uh we did one that You think they might have been purposely turning knobs to see what would happen? No, I think like some of them are design problems. Oh. Uh. Not just numbers problems. I think there are numbers problems in them, but I think others are design problems. That are still knob turnable to to actually be fixed and don't have to like have a full like reanimation or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, some might just need like better visuals for a couple of the, like I the last time when I played beta for Dragonflight and I was just like playing dungeons, unless I really ran into something, I didn't really open up the uh bug tracker or the feedback thing or whatever. I was just kind of like, yep, yeah, that boss is fine, closed, and I just kept going. I had that thing open multiple times. Like every dungeon I was leaving feedback or something of like, okay, so in this boss, this has to change to make this like either you have to either change the timers or you have to change the visual on the ground to be color coded about how this is about to happen because it's too, your reaction time is sub two second and not even two seconds. It's like sub one second to figure out where you need to be. And then what is actually forgiving or not forgiving before another thing starts and all this stuff. And I was just like, I'm just going to, I'm just spamming them with feedback. And then it was like, the one dungeon we did was Grim Patol, the remake of it. Uh, two of the bosses need to be fixed or like need to have changes done visually to them. And the other two are fine. So they, you know, 50 mm-hmm. 50. Um, and then we did the Dawnbreaker, I believe, is the dungeon. And that one needs a full recook. <laughs> it, 
it either needs a full recook or I think the some of the bosses need a full redesign mixed with movement and mixed with the way that you navigate the town. It's just not clear. I think it becomes clear and then it's like, okay, but then it's still, there's so much damage happening all over the place and whatever. So it's like, all right, recook, <laughs> put it back in the oven. It ain't done yet. Well, that'll be interesting. So, but I mean, it's the, you know, we were literally doing them the day they opened them. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure, you know, even this, if it's not this weekend that next week will roll around and they'll fully tune things after a week of testing. And we'll, yeah, we'll go back in and be like, okay, now this could either hurt a little bit more or, Hey, this is fine now. Good job. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, they got some time, I guess a little bit. Yeah. Two months. Ballpark. So, all right then. We will see you guys in seven days. No, maybe seven, maybe longer than seven days. Might be the weekend when we record next. Um, got some stuff going on, so might be a delay. But otherwise, we'll see you then. Toodaloo, bye bye.